so hi everyone so in that video we are just going to talk about the microprocessor yeah so basically microprocessor is a device which accept the input data basically that data should be the binary okay so basically that it accept the binary information process those information and then will send the resultant information into the output port so this is called the microprocessor as you can see i have drawn some block here so this is a memory which is connected to the microprocessor externally okay as you can see output port which is also connected to the externally with the microprocessor basically this is a chip microprocessor and output port it is also the connected to the microprocessor externally as you can see here if you notice then you will find that micro microprocessor and memory is connected with a system bus that you can see here and this system bus is uh, bi-directional that means that microprocessor can read from data read data from this memory or it can write data into this memory that's why it is a bi-directional now if you will come here then you will see these two device input port and microprocessor is connected with this system bus but it is unidirectionally that means whatever the input will be provided by the uh, user that input will directly comes to the microprocessor through this input port okay and the see here this this two device microprocessor chip and the output port is also connected with the system bus which is also unidirectional that means whatever the data will be after process those data the resultant data will be sent to the output port through this system bus so let me let me derive one general de definition related to the microprocessor first so let me derive first so as you can see this is a ic basically this is a ic so this ic can read the binary information from any storage device which is called memory as you can see memory and it also accept the data or the binary data from the input port and will process those data according to the instruction and then will provide the result at the output port so basically this is the general definition the device which perform this function so let me write the thing that i have told so this ic this ic can read information from any from any storage device storage device is called memory accept binary data as input accept binary data as input and then process those data according to according to the instruction provide according to the instructions provide result provide result as output is called micro processor so basically this is a general definition according to the microprocessor this ic can read the binary information from any storage device 
and accept binary data binary data that means when the user will enter some data into the input port that data will first convert the by into the binary data then that binary information or binary data will send to the will be sent to the microprocessor microprocessor will process that binary information and then after process those data the resultant data microprocessor will be sent those resultant data to the output port and again those out into the output port there is a device there is a converter which convert that binary data into the actual data and then send the user will get the output so here there is a there will be one converter which convert the actual data into the binary information and then here there will be another one which convert the binary information binary informations to the actual data so there will be two circuit will be there okay so basically that was uh, there was that this was the general definition about the microprocessor okay microprocessor so instead of this there are some features are there microprocessor first is it is a multi-purpose what does it mean it means that it can store data it can read or write data from the memory it can read or write the data it can read the data from input and write the data also the output okay so that's why that's why it is a multi-purpose another which is a programmable which is a programmable programmable what does it mean means that this device or the chip of the microprocessor can be propelled by some software instruction so that's why it is called the programmable and the third one is a clock driven what does it mean so this term define that that microprocessor has a particular operating frequency at which frequency at which frequency microprocessor will start to perform operation so that's why this is a clock driven okay we'll see it in our coming session basically so this were the basic information according to the microprocessor about the microprocessor so let me come to our next topic another term is uh, there is another term which is a microcontroller the term is related to microprocessor so what does it mean microcontroller so let me first erase this thing what does it mean microcontroller micro controller what does it mean so basically as you can see this is a microprocessor chip here this is a memory device and this is two device which is input device or output device okay so this is a four device so if you will comprise this four device in a single chip if you will comprise this four device in a single chip so that chip will be called as microcontroller chip basically so that chip will be called as microcontroller chip so that means microcontroller is consist of memory microprocessor input output input output port and another also another devices also okay so this were our microcontroller okay so let me come let me draw the another block diagram i think which will help you to understand the microprocessor more vividly okay so let me draw it first as you can see block one and block two so this is a block diagram so this block diagram that i have drawn here this block diagram is the same as the block diagram that i have depicted before okay so as you can see the output port input port memory device is also here 
and this three device is connected externally with the microprocessor so this is a microprocessor or the central processing unit cpu so but the internal diagram has a change a bit basically as you can see this is a two i have divided this internal diagram in a two way two two part one is a alu another is a control unit that you can see basically it means that microprocessor is a consist of alu and the control unit alu and control unit this is a micro processor that you can see here so now if you will move to the second block then you will find the same block diagram input port output port memory which is connected externally with the microprocessor but the internal diagram has changed a bit here this diagram this internal diagram is quite simpler than the previous one here you can see the alu arithmetic logic unit it was in the previous one and there is a so many other register accumulator general purpose register timing and control unit that defines that basically microprocessor is consist of all this element okay so basically when we will discuss the architecture of 8085 microprocessor then we will find all the component into that architecture part okay so these were the basic information related to the microprocessor so in that video we are just going to talk about only 8085 microprocessor so let's see some features of 8085 microprocessor so now before going to the features of 8085 microprocessor let's see some use of microprocessor first use of microprocessor so nowadays if you look at your surround then you may find so many modern type of machine okay so basically those machine which we use in our daily basis so like washing machine um, traffic light controller dishwasher so these all machine are the example of microprocessor based product okay so this is the basic use of microprocessor so let me come to the next topic so basically our in this session entire session we will discuss only the 8085 microprocessor so let first see some features related to 8085 microprocessor Eight zero eight five microprocessor. So features of so eight zero eight five microprocessor was invented in nineteen sixty nineteen six seventy six by Intel. Okay. So before that device, before that microprocessor, there were three more, which are first one was 4004 this was the first second one was it was invented in 1971 by intel and then the next one was 8008 it was also invented by the intel 1972 and then it was upgraded and the next one was 8080 it was in 1974 it was also invented by intel after upgraded this device 8080 they invented the next one 8085 which is in our topic 8085 which is in 1976 okay so after upgraded this device they have invented they were they were invented the next one which is 8086 it was in 1978 so this is the basic sequence okay now let me discuss some features of 8085 microprocessor basically it is a basically this microprocessor is this 8085 microprocessor is a 40 pin 8085 this is a 40 pin 
chip that means 40 pin is available it is a chip and 40 hardware pin is available okay so next one the operating frequency as i have told you the microprocessor is a clock driven so it has also a operating frequency that means for 8085 the operating frequency is 3 megahertz to 5 megahertz okay so that means at that frequency it will start to active or it will start to work then the next one 8085 it has 8 bit data line which is so important 8 bit data line what does it mean that means user can give user can enter 8 bit data at a time to the microprocessor or user can give 8 bit data at a time to the microprocessor as well as microprocessor after processing the operation microprocessor also send 8 bit data to the output port okay so this is a 8 bit data line another next one it has 16 bit address line or you may say in another way 16 line has been allocated for this 8085 as a address line 16 line has been allocated for address line for 8085 microprocessor and the next one as it has a 16 bit address line or 16 different address line that means how many memory or how many different type of location can be generated it will be 2 to the power 16 that's why 8085 has 64 kb kilobyte memory space memory space so these all are the important information related to 8085 microprocessor another is it start to work at plus 5 volt power supply it start to work at plus 5 volt power supply which is pin number 40 probably and 16 address line and the next one is to deliver 16 or 64 kb memory location or memory space is exist in 8085 microprocessor so there are some unknown data which is data line what is data line data bus address line what is address line and how this 64 kb memory space is generated in 8085 microprocessor so let's see this three thing in our next slide so as you can see that i have depicted all the three system bus over here so first is a data bus second is a address bus this is a and third is a control bus so these three system buses are available in 8085 microprocessor so first let's start from the first one so first describe the first one so first the system bus is a data bus that you can see here data bus is a 8 bit data bus available in 8085 microprocessor that mean it can process 8 bit data at a time so basically this data bus is making connection between the 8085 microprocessor and the input output port which is externally connected to the 8085 microprocessor as well as it is making connection between 8085 microprocessor and the memory ic that you can see here basically from that statement we can conclude that thing the the base data bus is basically bidirectional in nature because it is making it is making connection between all the thing microprocessor input output and the memory IC that you can see okay so next point is basically as it is a 8 bit data bus that means if the user wants to enter some data to the microprocessor it can enter 8 bit data at a time to the microprocessor in the same way if microprocessor wants to send some data into the input output port or it may send it may store some data into the memory ic that it can send 8 bit data at a time so from that statement i can also conclude that microprocessor send 8 bit data to memory ic to store 
so that's why this data one data two data three all are the 8 bit data yeah that means 8 bit data is consuming all the different address location that you can see here okay so that was basic information about the data bus now let's comes to our next bus which is the address bus that you can see here basically it is a 16 bit address bus and this address bus is making connection between the microprocessor and the memory ic chip that you can see here that you can see here so from that picture you can see this address bus is unidirectional in nature okay so and 16 line is allocated for this address bus what is the use of this address bus basically basically the use of address bus is when the microprocessor will place some address to the address bus address bus will indicate that particular address location from the memory ic or particular register from the memory ic so this is the basic use of the address bus let's talk about something different so if you if, let's assume if you have two lines okay so then how many different type of location you can generate by this two line you can generate two to two to or four different type of location by helping these two lines which are 0 0 0 1 1 0 and 1 1 these are the four different location suppose instead of two if you have three lines okay three lines then how many different type of location you can generate you can generate 2 to the power 3 and that will be 8 location that means you can generate 8 different type of location you can generate 8 different of type of location in that way suppose now let's take instead of 2 instead of 1 you have 16 different 16 different line you have so how many different type of location that you can generate you can generate to do 16 different type of location which is 64 kb which is 64 kilobyte as you can see here that microprocessor is allocating 16 line for this address basis that means that microprocessor can generate to do 16 different address location into this memory ic so this memory ic is consist of to do 16 different address location or you may say 64 kilobyte address location and each and every address location is consist of is uh, each and every address location can store how much of data 8 bit data in each and every address location so 8 bit data can store by can be stored by each and every address location at a time so that was the basic information related to address bus okay now let net now let's comes to our next address bus next control bus not the address bus next system bus or you may say the control bus which is a control bus that you can see control first of all control bus is a bi-directional in nature in that symbol you can see that bi-directional in nature second control bus is consist of different type of control signal which are exist in its read by microprocessor like read if you wants to read something from the memory you can generate that signal you have to generate that signal write ale address latch enable so these are the all control signal which exist which belong from this control bus okay so as you can see here so this blue line is a control bus here and the black line is a control signal that i have depicted here so basically this black line define the one control signal which is a memory read we will discuss the, about that signal later but here i just try to i am just try to give you the brief introduction so here you can see the memory read signal is there basically by that signal we wants to microprocessor wants to enable the memory buffer of this memory ic as what what will happen if microprocessor wants to read or retrieve some data 
from this particular memory ic from any particular location of this memory ic so at that before retrieve that data microprocessor will send a control signal which is memory read as you can see the black line and this memory read signal will enable the read buffer from the memory ic and at that point of time microprocessor can able to retrieve the data from this memory ic so this is the basic operation of the control bus okay so these were the three system bus that i have described in our coming session in our next slide we will draw the 40 pin chip and we'll try to indicate all the pin function okay so let's draw the 40 pin chip here now as you can see this is a pin diagram of 8085 microprocessor okay so these are the 40 pin all are the 40 pin it has been depicted here and this is a 40 pin chip basically as you can see different pin has a different work function and you can see these are the control pin here and these are also the control pin here so all are the control pin by this pin basically microprocessor produce some control signal okay here you can see the interrupt pin these are the interrupt pin as you can see or you may say the communication pin or these are the also the communication pin or pin here both two are the communication pin now if you move to here they will find 8 bit higher order that address bus is here 8 bit a8 to a15 is this is a higher order address bus as you can see this is a ad0 to ad7 these are the 8 bit multiplex address or the data bus you can see here okay and as you can come here then you find one is a ground one is a supply port or supply pin another two pin is here so by this pin basically microprocessor get the actual frequency or the operating frequency with which frequency basically it start to operate it start to uh, operate or restart to activate you may say so these are the 40 pin i have depicted here now in our next session or next video we will draw the architecture of 8085 microprocessor and try to understand all the part and all the function okay so that's that's all